Hello, my name is Shane Young with Bold Zebras, those guys, and today we're going to talk about installing the September 2016 Cumulative Update for SharePoint Server 2016. Oh, so many 2016s, it gets really confusing. Right, as you probably know, this is part of a series where I just every month when the new Cumulative Update comes out, whether I need it or not, I install it, um, but hopefully you are actually put a little more thought into it, and we'll kind of talk about that as we go along here. So, let's just jump in. Alright, so I'm logged into my SharePoint server as my install account, so sp underscore install. If you follow the video series that's linked over there to um, installing SharePoint 2016, you'll know that I use install account. It has the minimal permissions, uh, but it does have all the right access in order to be able to successfully patch. Key things being local administrator and having access to all the databases, so we go to update those, that can happen. So that's who I'm logged in as. So first thing I want to do is I want to open up Central Admin. So I'm going to click on Start. And I'll type in Central. And then it will pop up here. We'll say Yes. And just like that, Central Administration opens up. And so what we want to do is we want to start over here with Check Product and Patch Installation Status. We need to know where our farm is so we know how to take it forward. And so here you can see that my SharePoint uh, 2016 farm has some different updates installed. And so for this farm, I've actually installed uh, RTM, and then the June 2016 update, the July 2016 update, and the August 2016 update. Now remember, they're cumulative updates, so I've installed all of them on this farm because, well, I wanted to make a video of installing each one, but you do not have to do that. So if you have RTM today and you want to jump straight to the September 2016 cumulative update, you're more than welcome to. You don't have to do any of those steps along the way. But if you've done those steps along the way because, you know, you kept your patches up to date or whatever, then that's fine also. Which really brings us to our next big point, and that is determining whether or not you should install a specific CU. So just because the September 2016 CU came out, in this case uh, last week, um, that doesn't mean you should just install it because, hey, it's out there, yay, I need a patch. No. When it comes to cumulative updates, you need to do a few things. And one of them is you need to say, hey, I have problem X. And I can point on the screen that this cumulative update fixes it, right? Here's the fix for it. If you can't do that, then there's no reason to put a cumulative update on. One of the things to remember about SharePoint cumulative updates is you cannot uninstall them. So once you put this into your farm, whether it goes good or bad, you're stuck with it forever, or you're going to have to you know, burn everything down and restore from backups, and nobody wants that. So cumulative updates are a type of thing you should tread lightly on, all right? So we'll look at that a little more as we go here. Uh, so one of the things you'll see here is my farm's all these different builds, 4417, 4405, 4393. Uh, so Stephen Gosner, or Stefan, sorry, Stefan Gosner actually put an article out kind of talked about what build number your farm is at and how to, what that means and doesn't mean. And so I'll link to that. Uh, well, no, I can't link to it over here, so I'm going to link to it down in the description if you want to read that and just get a better understanding of what build your farm at. Is that the good news is that this screen right here gives you the best view of kind of where things are and what levels you are. So you can see that I've got all these different ones and it shows me what KB I installed to get there. So these uh, version numbers or build numbers, what I like to do with these is I like to use an uh, external resource. So I'm going to open our tab here. I'm going to go to www.toddclint.com. Now, generally speaking, Todd is a bad person. I'm probably going to do something to his picture here in the uh, video as I produce it. But one of the good resources Todd does provide is this tw SharePoint 2016 builds. So I'll click on that navigation. And we jump over here. What you're going to see is that Todd has all the different build numbers for SharePoint 2016 and how you get to those builds. So you can see that 4417, right, that's the build number I'm at right now, that came from installing these August 2016 cumulative updates. Um, and so the September CU launched, and so that will get us to build 4432 and it's going to be by installing these two updates. So Todd's gives you a good uh, indication of what's going on with these. Also, Todd tracks any bugs, notes, or regressions with a given CU. Now, you'll find with SharePoint 2016, he doesn't usually have anything, and that's just because we don't know of anything that's bad or happened to this point. Um, if you look at his 2013 list, you'll see that there's a lot more there because I think what it has to do with is at this point in the product cycle, there are a lot more 2013 installs out there. So when a bad thing happens, we um, we know about it, so we get it documented out here. Uh, but with 2016, we don't really have any of that. 
Or maybe they've just gotten so good at building patches they aren't breaking anything. I doubt that, but it's good thought to have. So looking at this, you're going to see that there are two September 2016 updates you care about. And uh, so here's the link to directly download those. But before you do that, you probably want to look at them and see, is there a reason I need these? So if we click on this first one, you're going to see that one of the downsides of the September updates has got some known issues right off the bat. And there's two things that are discussed here you should look at, right? One is that changing licensing. So if, like, if you're going to go from a trial to um, you know, a licensed version or if you want to go from you know, standard to enterprise or any of that type of stuff, none of those uh, actions can be done after you've installed this update. That's pretty bad, right? Or maybe it's not. I mean, if you're already at the right license level, you don't care. But uh, you know, those are the type of things that make me real nervous when a patch has this big known issue going into it. Probably going to try and skip this one if I can. Uh, the other thing is it warns down below is that this patch may take three times longer than the average Baird install. That also makes me nervous. Um, we're going to find out together here how long it takes me to install. So <laughs> I haven't done it yet. I haven't tested. So we're going to learn together how long this really takes. But normally it only takes a few minutes. Um, now if you look down here though, improvements and fixes, there's a lot of things here and there are a lot of different little things. Now, in reality, with a CU, you're like, hey, yay, I want all those fixes. In reality, this makes me nervous also. Another reason I probably wouldn't put a September CU in production right now. All these little things getting changed in a CU, right? Essentially, what happens is somebody worked on each one of these bullet points separately, right? A bunch of people did this, 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 and this. And at the last second, they brought them all together in one build. It compiled. Somebody tested it for 30 seconds. They said, all right, it works. And they rolled it out. So when you see this many fixes in a CU, the chances that one of these uh, updates broke something that was working that you were enjoying previously goes up. So another reason I tread lightly with this one. All right, but so that gives you an idea of what's uh, all here. Remember, you can install it on RTM, no big deal. So that's good, so we'll hit back. And so that was the uh, language independent file. So that's everything that's universal across all the different uh, language versions of SharePoint. There's also a language dependent version. And so if we click on this, you're going to see that it does things like it updated the PowerShell command let help, which I look forward to playing with that actually. I do not want to take that my survey, so no thank you. And um, you know, update some different translations and stuff. So could be some good stuff there, especially if you're using different languages and having problems there. But once again, keep in mind, it's a little scary and it's a little early to be putting this on. Maybe you're watching this a year from now and you find out this is actually a good one, but Right now, I'm scared of this one. All right, so if we click on download. You're going to see I get a nice little download button here. I'll hit download. And then what I like to do is I'm going to do a save as. And so I actually have on my system, we'll kind of navigate back here to the front here. So for my C drive, I keep an install folder. And so that's everything I've ever installed on the farm. And so then I also then have a separate folder for each one of these CUs. So I created a folder called September 2016 CU. And so then I've already downloaded the file into this location, and it was uh, you know, about 350 megs. There you go. So that one's already good, so downloaded, but you need to download that. So we'll cancel, and we'll hit back. And back again. And so then you also need to get the second one here. So we're going to download, right, because you want both of them. And so we're going to download this guy. And you can see, once again, 486 megs. And I'm going to put that, I'm going to do a save as here. And also put this in that C install September 2016 CU folder. So I've already done that. So boom. So both of those are done. So we can close out of this. We can close out of Todd's. Um, before we jump in, right, so we know we're going to try and get this build number up from 4417. I want to back up here one. So we'll go back to Home Central Admin. And then Upgrade and Migration. And so the other thing I always like to look at here is review my database status. And so with the databases, you can see no action required as well. So this tells me that my databases are at the same build as the farm. So everything is good and happy. So sounds like a great time for me to do some patching. So we'll close out of Central Admin. And we'll open up our uh, folder here. So we'll say go to C Drive, Install, September 2016 CU. And so I'm going to double click on this first file. Yes to run it. I'm going to read all this. It looks good. Click the button and say continue. OK, so this is going to start updating the bits. This is going to put all the new bits down. Um, keep in mind, my farm is uh, you know, 
or my SharePoint server, this particular SharePoint server is not happy when all this is happening. Um, Microsoft does have a link. One of the new features of SharePoint Server 2016 is you can do zero downtime patching if you have enough servers. I think it takes about eight. Um, but I'll link down in the description as well for that a uh, link to the Microsoft zero downtime patching. So if you want to go read about that and look at how you might uh, take advantage of that in a production farm to do all your servers without actually having to take anything offline. It does require a good hardware investment, but if you're running production, shouldn't be a big deal. Uh, the steps as far as running the CUs and kind of things we looked at there, that's all the same. Just you're going to run it on different servers at different times. All right. So I'll hit pause while this runs and I'll see you in just a second. All right. So after a brief hour and 32 minutes to run the install, it's ready to reboot. Yes, that's right. You heard me. An hour and 32 minutes. So we talked about that. I want to talk about for a second more, though, right, that this patch said that it would be a little slow. That's a lot slow. Um, but kind of talking to some people on Twitter and stuff um, and other conversations while this was running, I had nothing else to do. I also ate lunch and made a video on 2013 patching, but whatever. Um, it sounds like this CU might become a new baseline CU. So we, we all might find ourselves installing it. So while I, I was a little skeptical about all the thing I, everything I saw, it sounds like maybe that was all just kind of setting up a new baseline. I don't know. Time will tell. Not, still not saying I would go put this on today, but... Uh, just know that hour and 32 minutes for us to install, that's normal and expected behavior. So, all right. So we'll hit yes to do the reboot. And then while this is rebooting, I will hit pause and then I will bring the video back once we are done or got it back up and running so we can continue the next step. See you in a second. Okay, so my reboot's finished and I realized that in all of my craziness around the hour and 30 minute uh, install time that I forgot to install the other patch. Normally I would have installed it first before rebooting, but at the same time because that patch changed so much and took so long, maybe I'm better off not, maybe I'm happier that I rebooted. Either way, we need to navigate back to our C drive and install and then September 2016 CU. And so then now we need to do the WSS um, version. I don't even know why it's called WSS, but the second file, we need to install it. Let's just call it that, easier name. So I double clicked on it. Yes to this. I will click here to accept the terms and say continue. Okay, so then now this is going to start extracting files and put all the pieces in place as well. I'll close this. I'll note the time and I'll reboot, or sorry, I'll hit pause and I'll come back as soon as this finishes. See you in a second. Okay, so that update took about six minutes, which is pretty par for the course what it should say. So I'll say okay because the installation's done. And hooray, it doesn't want me to reboot again, so yay. All right, so then now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the Start button down here. And then I'm going to start typing SharePoint. And what we need to do is we need to run the Products Configuration Wizard. Actually, before we do that, let's jump over to Central Admin. I'll show you something else first. Go to Central Admin. Yes. Okay, so when Central Admin opens, what I want to do now is go back to Check Product and Patch Installation Status. And so what you're going to see here is that 4417 is now installed, right? So our version has incremented, our biddedness has changed and increased. And so now what needs to happen is we need to run the configuration wizard to make our databases update, right? So if we go back over here to upgrade and migration and then click on review database status, you'll see that your databases are in compatibility range and upgrade is recommended. So it knows that the bits have been upgraded, but the databases haven't had all those uh, changes and updates applied to them. Um, so very important concept to kind of just delineate between installing the bits and then running configuration, which is what we're about to do, which will update the databases. All right, so we'll close out of this. And so then now we'll do start again and we'll type in SharePoint again. And then this time we're gonna click on configuration wizard and yes. All right, and so then the wizard opens up, so we'll say next. It's like, hey, I'm gonna take this server offline while you do all this, is that cool? Yes, it is. And then hit next, and so this will start applying. Who knows, hopefully it only takes five or six minutes, maybe up to 10, but it could take an hour and a half like the other part of it did. We just, we just don't know. I'll hit pause, and I'll let you know in just a second. Real quick, I unpaused it here to show you that um, sometimes if you're watching this process because you're nervous Nelly, you know, you'll notice that this process might end up being 100.02, 104, 100, 
104, 0.04. Lots of different numbers show up in this percentage complete. Just ignore it. Um, it's not a bad thing. It doesn't in all the different CUs I've ever paid attention to. So I, there you go, 100.04 100, 100 just popped up. Um, anyway, just wanted to point that out because sometimes that scares people. So anyway, back to pause. All right, so that took about 45 minutes, I think. Um, we'll double check here in the logs in just a second. So it was all successful. That's good news for us. I will also note that normally it's, you know, all the time takes to run through step nine and step 10 goes really fast. And this one, about half the time was in step nine and half of it was in step 10. So a little bit of a different behavior than other CUs. Just something else for you to kind of know about as you go through running this patch. So we'll hit finish. And so by hitting finish, that's going to open up central admin and we'll just go double check that everything's good. And then we'll finally we'll just check and see how long that really took. Let's quick check product and patch installation status. So here we can see all of our biddedness is upgraded and happy. We knew that already though, so that's good. And then we'll go back over here to upgrade migration. And we'll click on review database status. And so it looks like uh, database stuff to date, so no action required on all of them. Um, but it does look like the My Site Collection ha or Content Database has something that's not quite right on that one. Um, so I'll loop around and check that. I'm guessing that that's probably a piece of confusion around the My Sites, but um, I'll double check that in a second. So then we'll do Upgrade Migration. And then we will say um, check upgrade status. And so here you can see that the upgrade, let's see, it did go from 135, so it took eh, 31, 32 minutes. So not as long as I thought. We did have three warnings. That's the same as we've had with all the other updates. You also know so that last month it only took seven minutes to run. A uh, month before that was eh, about seven and a half minutes. So my upgrade times, you know, went from seven and a half minutes up to, you know, 32 minutes. So it's quite a bit of a change when none of the content or anything's changed. It's just the data. Okay, so let's just check up on our error again. So if we go back over to upgrade migration, or not error, but warning, right? Under review database status, database is up to date, but some sites are not completely upgraded. So what you can do is switch over to your SharePoint 2016 management shell, right? Run as administrator and then run the command stsadm exe o local upgrade status and then I'll put that to a file so arrow status dot text and then if you open that file so see and it takes a couple minutes to run it's the reason I didn't save it for video I just did it off the side and I was nervous <laughs> for just being honest so see users and then SP install there's my status file and so if you search in here for um, upgrade, what you're going to find, scrolling down here, is that needs upgrade right here is I have uh, SiteMaster. And so SiteMaster is part of the um, uh, mechanism that allows for fast site collection creation. So if you have my sites on prem, like we do in um, the farm that I've built here, then this site collection template gets provisioned in the background for you. It's magic. You don't know about it. You can't touch it. it just It's there and it works. But um, it causes some errors with search, which we covered in the install video. And it looks like it also is not getting upgraded. So I'll dig into this more, but I'm going to bet you dollars to donuts that what's going to be said is that this is not an error message. This is a red herring, so ignore it. So I'll add annotations to the video if I turn out to be wrong. But I'm pretty certain that this is fine. So that was the only thing that needed upgraded. So we'll close out of that, we'll close out of this, we'll close out of this. And so that's what's driving this error message right here. It's because of the my site uh, fast site collection creation. So either way, we are in good shape then with our September 2016 update. Um, hopefully you liked the video. If you want to get more of this type of stuff, I do SharePoint stuff, Azure stuff, all those fun things, you can hit the subscribe button. It's about right here somewhere. Or um, you can always hit me up at Shane's Cows on Twitter if you have any questions or if you need to work together, need some help with your production environment, good old Bold Zebras is there for you. So thanks and have a great day.